だけど恐れることはない所詮これは飼い鳴らされた水牙を抜かれ虚勢された水だ It's official. Haru thinks about the water's genitals. Are you really even that surprised? Okay, before we do anything, I just want to get something out of the way. I don't hate Haru. I don't like him, but it's not like he ruins the show for me. And if you can relate to him or if you like him, that's fine. The things that he went through are very real problems. The feeling that everybody else's life is leaving your stalled life in the dust. The idea that everybody's impatiently waiting for you to have everything figured out. The feeling that you have to choose between doing what you want and doing what others want. Those are very real problems. If Rin represents the type of person who acts out in the name of change, Haru is the exact opposite. The person who runs away from change. These are universal ideologies, and we all have a little bit of both of them inside of us. This is analyzed further in the Real Talk video, but bottom line, I think that if you like Haru, that's fine. I just don't. That doesn't make me like the show any less or lower my opinion of you at all if you can relate to him. Okay? Okay. Now we can return to our regularly scheduled review. By the way, this review is supposed to be light on the spoilers, so forgive me if I'm being vague at times. Alright, there are more characters than just those five. Also in the Iwatobi Swim Club is Go, Rin's little sister. By the way, it is stated that Go is a boyish name, the same way that Rin or Haruka are girly names. So, what is up with the Matsoka parents? This is the Japanese equivalent of having a son named Jennifer and a daughter named James. What sense does that make? Well, anyway, Go goes to the Iwatobi's high school and works as the manager of the swim club, filling a very needed space in such a predominantly male cast. And she's good not just as a female character, but as a character in general. She's funny, sweet, takes charge, and doesn't let the fact that she's a girl define her in any way. I also really like the scenes that she has with Rin, which are sweet and really well done. And there are also major characters in the Samazuka swim team besides Rin. In season 1, his roommate is Aichiro Nitori, who is Rin's biggest fan. It starts out in the territory of almost creepy hero worship, but it does improve as the show goes on. He really could have just been a characterless lackey for Rin, but he's a lot more than that. Rin even chooses him to be the next captain. In the second season, he swims breaststroke for Samizuka. Season 2 also introduced two other characters on the Samizuka swim team. On the backstroke for the relay is Momotaro Mikoshiba, who is the little brother of the team's previous captain. He starts out as a raging D-bag, but over the course of the series, he becomes a raging D-bag with a song in his heart. He spends a very large amount of his screen time crushing on Go. It never seems to strike him as unwise to aggressively hit on the captain's little sister. He really does seem surprised every time Rin puts him in a headlock and drags him away. All joking aside, it is nice to see the big brotherly aspect of Rin in these scenes. Going back to the eye motif from earlier, the irises of his eyes are really small, which makes him look like a psychopath. Then again, he does have some very psychopath moments in his relentless pursuit of Go. I won't lie, I would break out the mace if I saw that running towards me. Then there's Sosuke Yamazaki, who's Rin's best friend from when they were little kids. He swims butterfly for Samizuka Academy in Season 2. And more than any other friendship on this show, I really buy the one between Sosuke and Rin. These two work off each other so well. The two of them are a study of contrast. The first impression we get from Sosuke is cold and calculating, which is offset by the hot-headed and emotional Rin. Like Rin, he definitely has some skeletons in his closet. But to me at least, Sosuke is still a really good character. In fact, he's a great example of how they could have done Haru's character. They're both emotionally distant and often seem unhappy for reasons we don't know of. But unlike Haru, there's actually a lot more to Sosuke than that. First off, he's still a nice guy, even if he does have his lion's share of struggles. And secondly, we learn a lot more about his past than we do Haru's. The subplot between Rin and Sosuke is bar none the best thing that this show ever did. For a lot of the second season, I just wanted to get back to seeing what Rin and Sosuke were up to. Speaking of which, this show is actually kind of lopsided in terms of quality. I would say that the first season is flawed, but still pretty good. The second season, however, is so much more. 
Free Season 2, also known as Free Eternal Summer, is some of the best television that I have ever seen. If you're going to watch any of the show, I would actually recommend starting out with Season 2 and then watching Season 1 if you're interested. All the best episodes of the series are in Free Eternal Summer. Probably the best episode is the Six Beat Kick of Tears, which is mostly a Rin and Sosuke episode. There are truly heartwarming flashbacks that show the two just growing up together. And then the emotional atom bomb is dropped. I won't give you the details, but it is intense and it is executed wonderfully. This episode is very emotional, even moving at times. Also really good is the Somersault Turn of Promise, which is an earlier Rin and Sosuke episode. This is back when we still don't really know too much about Sosuke, and with this, we learn a lot about his childhood with Rin. Truth be told, this is the episode that pushed Free from being a pretty good show to one of the best shows I have ever seen. And season 2 was just getting started. It's not just Rin and Sosuke that get all the really good episodes. There's also a locomotive of a twist, where Makoto volunteers at the local swim club. The level of warm and fuzzy in this episode is remarkable. We also meet Kisumi, an old friend who went to elementary school with Rin and Sosuke, and then middle school with Makoto and Haru. Makoto seems to like the reunion. Haru, not so much. This episode actually seems to be aware about how much of a stick in the mud Haru can be, which was so refreshing. We also get another highlight towards the end of season 2 with a swim off in a foreign land. Rin gets a letter from his coach back in Australia offering him to come back to the team once he ends high school. He also hears about some trouble that Haru is going through, so I guess to help him out, he takes him with him to his short visit to Australia. This was probably intended to be a Rin and Haru episode, but it kind of just turns into a Rin episode. His time in Australia is something that we know very little about, and as we learn more about it, we learn a lot more about Rin. For example, Rin can speak English. I've been doing with Russell. Is there any other room available? That's because I'm swimming every day. What? I never said it was perfect English. This episode is also at the end of a huge Haru story arc. He's unsure about his future, panicking at seeing the rest of his life up close. But in Australia, he finds the answer. I personally never really liked the guy, but the ending of his arc is executed pretty well. There are plenty of genres where you could put this show. Things like sports, comedy, anime, drama, high school. But I think that the most fitting is Slice of Life. And that's kind of what this show is. A look in the life of a teenager. With all the joys, the fears, the stresses, all out on display. Throughout season one, one of Rin's goals is to win a race against Haru, the old friend that was always better than him feels like that if he can beat Haru in a race, he'll be able to move on with his life and follow his dream without any more interruptions. And he actually manages to beat Haru in the race, but finds out that it does not make him happy for very long. In the end, it's swimming with friends that made him truly happy. His friends sacrifice getting disqualified from regionals to help Rin out. The overarching plot of the second season is a mix between Rin and Sosuke's friendship and Haru's journey. Throughout season 2, the same question is asked many times of a lot of the characters. What do you want to do after high school? And it's a decision that pretty much everybody has to face at some point in their lives. It's stressful, it's confusing, and there's always doubt no matter what choice you make. Haru states many, many times that he doesn't really care about all that. He doesn't really care about scouts or college teams or swimming competitively. He just wants to swim free. You know, in case we missed it the first 5 billion times. He tries to brush it off, but it gets to a point where the pressure of everybody's expectations becomes way too much for him to handle. And this all leads to the huge fight that Haru and Makoto have at the end of the 11th episode. I really liked this moment. It's not just that somebody is finally taking charge and telling Haru to snap out of it, although that is a part of it, more than that, it's just a very effective scene. The animators know how to use body language and facial expressions very well, and it is used wonderfully here. There are a lot of images used in the place of words, which is a really nice touch. This moment is so intense that a camera that shouldn't exist gets out of focus. I don't really get it, but it's kind of cool. And then comes the precise moment when Haru realizes that if he doesn't have a plan, he might just get left behind. Oh, 
何とか言えよ決めたよ<笑>俺東京の大学に行く This is a great moment on behalf of everybody involved. There are many critical points in a person's life, but Free is an up close and personal look at one of the most important chapters of anybody's existence late high school. As somebody in that stage myself, I can say that they captured the roller coaster of emotions beautifully. I'm sure that everybody can relate their teenage self to one of the characters. I certainly could. It is astounding how much this show gets so right. Most people go into Free expecting high school comedy and shirtless guys. But this show is so much more than that. This is a series about endings and beginnings, which is why I wanted to use it to send off this show's third season. As we enter the summer, I bid you all goodbye for now. This is the host of the show with no name signing off. I'll see you guys later.